The President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. The civil party lawyer, Mrs. Silke Stutzinski, you take the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I um, would like to give some information about our client, Nam, additional information about our client and civil party, Ms. Nam Mon. And I would uh, only ask you uh, if I should do it now or um, after reading uh, the documents. It needs some minutes. It's not very long. long. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. May I just ask for clarification, um, Ms. Studinsky? Uh, you have some additional documents, uh, or you need to explain some documents that have been filed? Uh, no. I received, um, in the meantime, um, additional information that, um, about her, and she responded to questions that I put to her that is not related, which are not related uh, to the documents that have been submitted. And I would like to share this information with the chamber and the parties, and maybe also up to your discretion to. Uh, ask her again in person if vous, uh, you find it appropriate. Vous -même posez des questions à l'intéressé. The President. The President. Regarding the request by the civil party group, uh, uh, group two. Concernant cette demande du groupe des partis civils numéro 2. 
Mr. Tsunsky asked that uh, the chamber accept uh, the further information in relation to witness Namon before the reading of the statements of the witnesses. And uh, please be informed that uh, this request is not uh, regarded as relevant at this time. Cette demande ne nous paraît pas pertinente maintenant. The lawyer would wish to raise such a si request again, uh, then she would do so during the session in which uh, the statement of uh, or the testimony of the civil parties is uh, being heard de and this civil. schedule has already been planned to next week starting from the 17th of August 2009 and during that uh, period of time there will be a session in which there will be the position for the challenges uh, that would be raised uh, by the Defense Council in relation to the civil party applications. And this kind uh, of issue has already been notified uh, to the parties, so the, the Chamber would not uh, accept any other agenda which is not planned in our schedule during the, this afternoon session. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. President. I'm not sure that the translation um, was sufficiently clear, um, but next week it is intended to hear from Defence Council whether they challenge any of the civil parties' testimony uh, or status, uh, and um, uh, not to hear from them in detail, but just to give us the information. Uh, at that point, it seems a good time for you to raise your issue, uh, Ms. Studinsky. Uh, have, I, have I clarified the translation adequately? Yeah, thank you um, for this clarification, and I only want to add that I received this information that I wanted to submit at any time to the Chamber uh, recently, and of course after uh, the testimony of uh, civil party Ms. Namon, and therefore I couldn't submit it earlier. But I'm, um, I agree upon, of course, to raise it at the appropriate uh, time, and I will do this then next week and give this further information. Thank you very much. The President, we know that civil party lawyer oui, je vous remercie, is Monsieur le Président. J'avais donc indiqué à votre cours Ms. Fabine, uh, que thank you, Mr. je vous informerai President. le plus tôt possible chamber, à la suite de nos documents que nous espérions obtenir si nous pouvions maintenir l'audition like du dossier like de uh, 80 uh, uh, en l'état uh, nous uh, EA21, que nous and, uh, ne demandons we will not ask for the questioning of e civil party E281. We will not ask to have the civil party questioned. Thank you. Et cela de façon à ce que, and bien this entendu, in such a way so that the court uh, can uh, organize the schedule in the best way possible. Thank you very much for informing the Chamber.
กลามกี next uh, the graphie Mrs. s a i k o v o t i is now instructed to read the written record of the interview of p a r s i document under D78 slash 5. The c r a f t e document D78-5. This is the written record of the interview of witness Park C. Elias San. This record was done on the 1st of April 2008 at 2.30 p.m. by the investigators of the co-investigating judges office in the court of uh, in the extraordinary chambers in the court of Cambodia question and answers question question before 1975 what did you do where did you live response I joined the revolution in 1972 at the On Dong Village, Tang k r o South Sub District, Santok District, Kampong Thom Province. Comrade Lin, the district chairperson, brought me in. I joined a production unit which grew farm crops like jackfruit and bananas at d a i k r o h o m in s a n d a n District. When I joined, I volunteered. Since they told me that joining the revolution was to liberate the nation and bring Prince i h a n o u k back into the country, I was in the production unit until 1974 when they recruited female soldiers in the North Zone where Koi t u o n alias t o c h who was the zone chairperson, and his wife. Three was chairman of the women battalion which I was in in Kampong Thom province. I received military tactics training at Chang d a n in Santok district for three months, and they sent me for additional training at Chong Da village, Barai district, Kampong Thom province. Later, they sent me to fight on many battlefields where Commander Chum, female, was the chairman of the 18th battalion, and another commander. Bain was the regimental commander who controlled three battalions, including my battalion. In January 1975, they moved me from the Kampong Thom sector forces up to the Central Army, which was called the Regular Army. Which moved around fighting everywhere, fighting in Kampong Cham, Kampong Thom, and Siem Reap. Afterward, they had us rest for three months to prepare to attack Phnom Penh. During the attack. On Phnom Penh, I was in the first division, where Eun was chairman and Kum was deputy chairman. The first division attacked and entered Phnom Penh through Chitteras, Udong. But at that time, I was responsible for an economic section issuing rice to the troops. Question: Between 17 of April 1975 and 1979, where did you work? Response. When we attacked and reached Phnom Penh, my first division was based from Sat Mai to Prak Nau. They had me farm wet and dry season rice at Bang Baya near Tuol Ko. On 18th of March 1977. I was arrested and put in prison.
Chang and all the messengers of Gum came to get me at the Prakate Tokmilia Hospital where I was sick at that time and it did not tell me the reason for my arrest. They only told me that to come to the division headquarters to wait for a truck to come get me. At 8 p.m. a military jeep came to take me and another comrade named Yun who came from Kampong Cham and it took us straight to Preysa passing through the glass factory. Before they arrested me, Avant they arrested the division commander Un and the petit Kim and took them away in 1977, saying they were going to study. Later, they arrested Chan, the regimental commander, comrade, female Chum, the chairperson at the deputy chairman and Tan, the member of the women's regiment in 1977. I did not know where they were taken, but I never saw them come back at all. My husband, Sam Wat, who was a deputy battalion commander in the 1st Division, was also arrested during 1977. After that, I never met him. There has been no news of him since then. Question. How did you know that the place they took you was Pressar? Response. When I first got to Preysar, Comrade Bong and Comrade Seung, who were the chairman and deputy chairman in charge of married prisoners, called me and Yun to a meeting and said that that place was Preysar, and they told us, you must know that this place is for holding traitors from the previous era and this place is for tempering and self-building. If you build yourselves well, you will stay alive. Si vous if not, you will die. En vie, sinon vous the comrades chairman and deputy chairman le said, le chef chef adjoint, it is not just you in the zones who are traitors. Euh, Even your mothers and fathers are traitors as well. Parents, père et mère sont Question. Comme des Please, Describe Question. the work system and the living conditions, conditions at Preysar. Response. Réponse. Preysar was a square four kilometers on each side and had no carré. fence surrounding it. But inside, there were sites for rice farming, an office, and work buildings, which included buildings 14, 17, and building 25, the place where Tati and Paul worked and lived. Aside from that, the entire Presa compound had many villages where they had the prisoners live in individual houses, for instance, Dol village and Roquin village, and at night they locked the houses from the outside, so no one could go anywhere. They divided the prisoners into units to work. For instance, I was in unit 16, a place for holding married women and old women. Unit 14 through unit 17 were for holding unmarried women. The men were likewise divided into units for married men and units for unmarried men. At Preysar, there was a unit for children from ages 13 through 15 whose parents had been arrested and brought there. And there were old people too, like the mother of Ta Eun, age 70, the commander of my first division, who had also been arrested and brought to Preysar. 
cette fin de veille a Work été incarcérée Nous commençons le travail nous travaillons When we stop to rest and eat gruel, manger, with each person lait. receiving two scoops of gruel, then we went back ensuite, uh, to work at 1.30 p.m. until 5.30 p.m. When we rested and ate, and then continued working until 10 p.m. The food was insufficient, and when we were sick, it just malade, brought us two or three pills. Ou There were no injections. If they made us keep on working, but uh, we were not yet well, a truck came to take us. Si on était malade, on ne At Prasar, tea was in overall charge. Paul, the deputy chairman, came to hold a meeting to tell those of us in Unit 16 to survive, to, correction, to strive to build ourselves, saying that the group from the North had betrayed the party and had collaborated with the Yuan. April 17 people were prisoners at Praesor too, but I never saw foreigners like Vietnamese. The work at Praesor prison was working the right fields, putting up petty dikes, digging canals, and mixing fertilizer. Comrade Bong held a meeting to say that Tuls Lang prison were for holding those who had betrayed the nation and who had high ranks from regimental level cadres, division camp commanders, and zone leaders and that Prasar was for the prisoners who were subordinates. Question, if prisoners committed offenses, what measures did they take at Prasar? Response, if they committed offenses, they did not let them eat gruel, but had them work as usual and put them in building 14, where There were chains for hanging, and they beat them. Building 14 was used to hold prisoners. In the past, there had been a female arrested and taken to Building 14, and in the morning, when she returned, I saw that her face was swollen, and they displayed her as an enemy whose example was not to be followed. Buildings 14 and 17 and 25 were outside the villages at Prasar. The offenses committed were picking up and eating crabs, snails, ripe sugar palm, and ripe wood apple. Aside from that, there was a cell for administering electrical shocks for interrogating both men and women, which I only learned about when Bong and Seung interrogating both men and uh, the chairman and deputy chairperson told me. Do you know where the prisoners who were arrested and sent away from Prasar question and the prisoners placed into Prasar came from and where they were taken? Response. I just know that every night I heard the sounds of trucks coming to Prasar and they called people out of the houses where they were living into the trucks and took them away. I did not know where they were taken. They only came to take people at night. Those people were named in lists they had called out. Every single week they had me take clothing and burn it in the rice field. I assumed that it was the clothing of people who had been arrested and taken away, and I never saw them return. There were a total of 500 to 600 prisoners at Prasar, both men and women. I never saw them torture or beat prisoners with my own eyes. As for me, I was held in Prasar prison for about two years, and I was never tortured or beaten. 
But uh, my name was called out to board uh, the truck three times by mistake during 1978. I also heard the sounds of trucks entering Prisar because I saw strangers. I did not know where they had come from. When I just heard trucks arriving, I would become frightened already. I never peur. saw any prisoners released. Qu Question. Question. Did you know Doc? Did you ever see Doc come to Pressor? Response. I knew Doc. Because before we fled from the UN in late December 1978, he came to a meeting of all of us at Prezor, including the old, the children, the men, the women, and he announced, I am Deutsch, the chairman of Tulls Lang Prison and the chairman of Prezor Prison. I did not know Deutsch before that. The content of the meeting uh, was him réunion, talking about the East Zone and North est, Zone soldiers being traitors and joining the UN, and he said he regretted that they had taken good comrades and uh, killed them, and that later he had learned bon that the comrades had not been traitors, that just the leaders had been traitors. He allowed the prisoners to express opinions, and John Mayer stood up and gave his opinion that I struggled to liberate the nation, but was accused of treason. Who were my 13 and 14-year-old children who were arrested, also accused of treason? After that meeting, they let us eat three meals a day with desserts in the afternoon. Later, on the day the Vietnamese came on 7 January 1979, Deutsch and his unit came to take the prisoners to Am Leng, Kompong Spui, to Kup village and Tumnip village, where Deutsch ordered 25 people arrested and taken to be killed, including me. But uh, six persons were released, including me. The others disappeared. And were not seen to return to the village. Question. Question. Did you know the condition of the people when you reached Phnom Penh on 17 April 1975? Response. When I entered Phnom Penh, the people had been evacuated out by the Khmer Rouge soldiers. My first division also received orders from Commander Un to evacuate the people away saying that they would be gone at the most a week or two and they would be allowed to return. After only four or five days, all the people had been evacuated from the city. I did not see any people killed then because they agreed to leave. I saw pagodas, but did not see religious observances. Question. Why did they arrest you and send you to Preissor? Response. When they arrested me, they did not tell me the reason, but when I reached Preissor, they told me that I had been a traitor and had collaborated with the UN. They said, the leaders are traitors, that the subordinates are traitors too. They never interrogated me at Prezor. They had me work and temper normally, and they never put me in chains. 
at Preso, I saw the old prison buildings remaining from the previous era, but they were not used to hold the Khmer Rouge era prisoners. They were left empty. While I was at Preso, I never knew. They never took me to Tulslein prison. I only heard them talk about Tulslein prison. In the 1975 era, I was a regim regimental economics chairperson in the first division. Dans un that de la regiment had three battalions, which had a total of 900 persons. 900 persons. At Preso, Après prisoners ça, were not permitted to speak to one another. Parler, they were forbidden eux, to move around freely, and they were guarded night and day. Jour et nuit. Question. Question. Please describe what your woman's regiment in the first division commanded by Eun did when it entered Phnom Penh. Response. Response. The woman's regiment had three battalions. One battalion was sent to Sri Ambal. Another battalion was sent to the government section in Turkov, and the other battalion was in the 1st Division staff near Wat Phnom. Question. What types of prisoners were at Preiso? Response. The prisoners included 17 April people and soldiers from the East and North zones, but I just knew about female prisoners. I did not know about female prisoners because they did not allow us to move around and make contact. All prisoners had to stay in the houses, in the villages. Fifteen to twenty persons in each house. And they were not handcuffed or leg shackled, but they locked the houses from the outside. At Preso, they divided the prisoners into units, or more than 100 persons each, with a unit chairman and deputy chairman in charge, all of whom had been prisoners arrested during 1975. Each unit was divided into small teams of 15 to 20 persons with a team chairman, a deputy, and a member in charge. This was the structure in my unit. I got free of Preso when fleeing from the Yuan to Omleng. When the Yuan attacked Tmok Kuk village in Omleng, I escaped from the supervision. I did not know where M13 was. I just knew that flesh where I was in Omleng was called Tmok Kuk. I requested to draw from memory the layout sketch of Preso, which is attached to this record. One copy of this record was provided to this witness. After it was read aloud, the witness had no objections and agreed to sign or impress right sample. President, the president, the AV officer, can you show the document 00818-6771 on the main screen? The visual has affiched the document that figures in the code 00 
Do the co-prosecutors have any comments to make regarding this person's statement? Do you have any comments to make je n'ai qu'une seule observation à faire. Elle a trait à la nature de S24 et au terme centre de rééducation. Dans le témoignage qui a été lu, le témoin cite Pong et Cern à son arrivée à Pressar. Et ces deux personnes leur ont dit, et je cite, « Vous devez savoir, cet endroit sert à enfermer les traîtres de la nation sous l'ancien régime et sert pour les gens à se rééduquer. Ils vont survivre en cas de bonne conduite et mourir dans le cas contraire. » Alors je m'interroge à la suite de cette citation sur la nature exacte du centre de S24, puisque c'était un centre où les personnes qui étaient envoyées n'étaient pas rééduquées au sens commun du terme, mais plutôt exploitées. Et la seule chose qu'elles pouvaient espérer en cas de bonne conduite, c'était la survie et non pas le recouvrement de leur liberté. Je souhaiterais, euh, si vous l'autorisez, que l'accusé puisse réagir par rapport à cela. S'agissait-il réellement d'un centre de rééducation où les personnes, une fois rééduquées, pouvaient être libérées ou s'agissait-il d'un centre où le seul espoir des personnes qui étaient détenues était le président, based on the submission, I think the accused during the previous observations has made sufficient observations. The accused, do you wish to add anything to the request made by the co-prosecutor? I believed during the questioning of the operations of I-21 you already answered to this question, if you wish, you can do it now, in addition to what you said. Si vous souhaitez le faire maintenant, si vous souhaitez apporter un complément d'information par rapport à ce que vous avez déjà dit, je vous en prie. The accused, Mr. President, I did respond in details to this question, so I do not have anything else to add. À ces éléments, je l'ai fait précédemment, donc je n'ai pas l'intention de répondre à cette observation. Actuellement. The civil party lawyers, do you have any observations to make regarding the statement of Pisi as read by the graph here? You, Your Honor, the civil party lawyers do not have any comments for this witness. Thank you. Non, Monsieur le Président, les co-avocats des groupes de parti civil n'ont pas d'observation à faire. S'agissant de ce témoin. President, and what about the defense counsel? Do you have any observations to make regarding the content of the statement of Pisi as read by the Graffier? S'agissant du procès verbal d'audition du témoin praxique dont le Graffier a donné lecture. Maître Karsabout. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Merci, Regarding the President, statement Monsieur of the witness Paisi, I noticed that in certain portions of the statements there are contradictions in contrary to other witnesses' statements. This morning, Bhutan said at Omlang, Deutsch did not order anybody to do anything, as he was also fleeing from the attack of the Vietnamese. But Paisi said, at Om Lang, Deutsch still issued order to arrest 25 people and then they were executed. This is just my observation, Mr. President. Thank you. The President. The accused is now given an opportunity to make, to make observation regarding the statement of Paisi as read out by the greffier. The accused. Mr. President, Monsieur le Président, the witness statement Paisi has numerous points which are appropriate Paxi and reflect the truth. Un certain number of number one is that she joins the female uh, unit under the supervision of Koitoun's wife. Her revolutionary name was D. And later on, she was integrated into the first division of the North Zone. This division, before 17 April 1975, and a little bit after that, was supervised by Eun and Gum Main. I knew this person, Gum, clearly. His original name was Prak Kum. He was imprisoned with me in 1968, and after 1975, the general staff transferred him to the North Zone because it was rumored that he scolded badly to his combatants. So in early 1975, Paisi made a proper statement, but Kum did not exist in 77. So she could not grasp the situation at the division where she belonged. She, sa she said she was the chairwoman of the economic uh, section of the of the that division. Actually, that division was changed to 703 division. And then she sued New Wung, the deputy secretary of the seven of the 810 division. So I am uncertain regarding this point. In addition, she says her husband's name was Samwat and that he was arrested. I tried to locate the name on the list of the prisoners to be smashed at prison, and I found the name Samwat on that list. But that Samvat was a member of the company at the Ministry of Commerce. And actually, she said her husband was a member of a platoon in the 310 division. So it's possible that the names are the same, but they are two separate persons. Separately, at Preso, there was a section regarding the interrogation, and I believed there was a detention, temporary detention at Preso before a decision was made by the S21 committee, but there was no interrogation section at Preso. This is my observations regarding Preso. And he said about the division 313, 14, 15, and 16, that, that is correct. And he said the overall charge person at Preso was T. That is contradictory, as we all knew. Hui was the one who was in charge at Preso. And finally, towards the end of her statement, 
Et enfin, si cet Etmorco, Etmorco, I still Cook, arrested people. Je continuais j'arrêtais encore And that des is not the truth. Mais ceci ne reflète pas la euh, vérité. Like Bhutan this morning, comme Bhutan ce matin, her statement was true. Sa déposition était véridique. So in conclusion, par conséquent, en conclusion, I have some impressions that she might not be the person who suffered at that location. She could be a member of the former 310 division of Kamrat Un, but worked in a separate unit. And this is just my observation, Mr. President and Your Honor. Être le cas. Voilà. Telles sont les observations que je souhaitais faire, Monsieur le Président. The President. Le Président. Next, Mr. Deutsch Perry, you are instructed to read the written record of interview of the witness Kang. Pan. The document's reference number is D78-3. Uh, you may proceed. Il là du du témoin Kang Pan. Monsieur le greffier, je vous en prie. Le greffier. The greffier. Document D78-3. This is the written record of interview of witness Kang Pan, alias Pui Pan, born on the 3rd of April 1954. This written record was made on the 31st of March 2008 at 10.10 a.m. by the Investigator of the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia. Question. Question. Did DC Camp interview you in October 2003? Response. Yes. Question. Question. We will read the entire text of the 13 October 2003 interview by Mr. Pan Suchi of DC Camp and summarized a number of important points and ask, do you acknowledge the entire text? Do you are from Trai Trang village and you were coerced by the village chairman to join a unit? You attended military training for a period of one year along with many other students and later you joined the 12th Division. In the beginning, you transported food, but later you fought on the battlefield south of Dakmao before the day Phnom Penh was liberated in 1975. After 17 April 1975, you were based at the Gondal Province Office as a guard for a period of time and entered Stung Baku, where you lived until the year the Vietnamese attacked in 1979. The leader at Stung Baku was Hoi, whose wife was Khun and you were arrested before the Vietnamese came in 1979. Stang Baku was an agricultural site, planting and growing, digging canals, working from 6 in the morning until 5 in the evening, and there was night work as well. The food was sufficient, three meals a day. You were a chair woman uh, of a unit of 12 persons being tempered and locked after between 70 to 80, 8 to 10 years old children whose parents had been accused of involvement and tendencies. All those children had been sent to Stambaku after their parents had been separated from them. The children were dumped there and abandoned. 
laissé more than 30 disappeared about one week before the democratic Kampuchea regime fell. Une semaine après la chute du Kampuchea démocratique. You declared that the people Vous being pampered were removed from Baku during night Baku time, but you did not know why they were taken away. You did not know what happened emmené. to them, Et vous ne savez pas but ce claimed that they must have been taken to Dulslang. There were no Dulslang. killings or torture at Stung Baku. Il avait pas de torture ou you knew that Baku, Baku was subordinate Baku to Dutch, whom you Duke. knew to be the chairman of S21. You made Deutsch when you studied two rencontré. times, each time Alors for a period of one week à deux at the Dulslang office. Deutsch very seldom came and the instruction was given by others. À la formation. Qui était During those studies, there were various documents, but no revolutionary flag documents were provided. You heard screams, but never entered the prison, or saw any prisoners walking back and forth, because they were put in a, into covered trucks for transport. Response, that text is entirely correct. Question, please further describe your work at s'il vous plaît, uh, veuillez Response. nous en dire un petit peu plus quant à votre They travail me à Baku. Out of unit 11. Réponse. And I don't know who made the decision to move me. Je ne sais pas qui a décidé And de I was sent to Stengbaku because I had a bad personal Baku, history Baku, and had an elder sibling who had been a teacher. I did not know that Stung Baku was a tampering site. When I arrived there, I saw Mao, the deputy chairman of the 41st Regiment, who had been arrested and sent to Baku for one night before he was sent to Tulslai. I was a person being tampered and I was responsible for looking after 12 other persons being tampered, all females. Those being tampered had been pulled out of the various divisions and they were intellectuals, etc. I looked after 30 to 40 children who had been separated from their parents who had involvements and tendencies. The children told me that they were the children of high-level officers of the previous regime police, military, and the educated, for instance. All those children had been sent to Baku approximately two or three months after Phnom Penh was liberated in 1975. Question. Please describe the Baku location and structure. Response. Baku was located south and directly opposite what we saw. La rivière de Baku, there were three resident sites there for the people being tampered. The first was the women's unit uh, on the unit other side of the canal from Hoy's house, about 20 to 30 meters from Hoy's house. The uh, second was near what we saw, which was the economics unit. The third was a site for the youth unit to live. That site was near Hoy's house, but far from the women's unit. Each unit had about 50 people being tampered. Units of 50. I will draw the structure of Baku for you. The geography and the structure are attached to this record. De la situation géographique et de la structure de Baku. house was a large, high house with a pool of water in front. Hoi lived there with his wife and child, along with five or six messengers. 
avec cinq ou six messagers. Les personnes often attended meetings with Hoi at Stengbapu, which focused on strengthening the planting and cultivation. Enfin, de développement de la production agricole. S21 and was a tempering site. C'était un endroit réservé à la réduction. Baku was to be considéré en faisant partie de Pressor. Those who were not able to temper themselves si were sent pas, to S21. Si à se rééduquer, ils étaient Baku envoyés à S21. Baku était led by Hoi dirigé par Hoi was et celui-ci était sous of le Lutch. contrôle de Duc. Please describe the Question. conditions of the people being tempered at Baku. Pouvez-vous nous décrire Response. Mm. The people being tempered worked every single day from 7 until 11 a.m. and from 12 until 5 p.m. Sometimes they were required to work at night from 7 until 10 p.m. The work was digging canals and transplanting. The children were used to collect the fallen fronds of rice. Baku was not surrounded by fence, but the cats who were police messengers came to check the residences every single day. Those being tempered did not dare run off from Baku because they feared they would be captured. Not a single person escaped from Baku. If someone was missing because they ran off, the team leaders were held responsible. They would be taken for self-building and guidance. I saw two women die. One hanged herself and the other died in a pool of water for an unknown reason. The people being tempered lived in ordinary houses. They were not encircled. When they were ill, there were medics in each unit of 50 to examine and treat them. Those tempering in the women's unit could not contact those tempering in the youth unit. They met during work time. As for the food, the first year work began at the pool. There were shortages of food. But later on, there was enough food for all the people being tempered. They all ate communally. Question. You said that the people were pulled out of Stengbaku and taken to Tulslang. Please describe this further. I saw them arrest people at Baku to take them to Tulslang at night, 5 to 6 p.m. in covered trucks every week to 10 days. I knew that those trucks had come from Tulslang because I recognized the trucks and the people who had worked at Tulslang. When I attended studies near Tulslang, I think that the orders to remove those tempering at Baku were ordered issued by S21, not by Hoi. Hoi just followed the orders of S21. Those who came to get the people being tampered first met with Hoi, and then Hoi's messengers went with them to the residences, called them out by name, and told them they were going to a different workplace outside Baku. All those being tempered, even the children thought they were probably being taken and killed because no one ever returned. When they came to get more children, they told them that they were being taken back to meet their parents. Some of the people being tempered, especially the children, 
hit themselves after hearing others tell them that they were being removed from Baku. But the people being tampered went around and collected the children and brought them back to the residences. All the children were removed before the Vietnamese came, except for one girl who traveled along with me to Nong Oral and who died there. The reason the girl had not been removed was because she had lived with her uh, mother. I learned that the wife, an infant, of the infant child of Hoi were removed and taken to Dual Slang about one week before the Vietnamese came. I learned this because a guard at Dual Slang told me while we were fleeing together when the Vietnamese were attacking. Lors de l'attaque des Vietnamiens, j'ai vu de mes propres yeux pour la dernière fois deux ou trois semaines avant l'arrivée des Vietnamiens en 1979. Question. Question. Did you ever see Deutsch? Avez-vous jamais vu Duke? Réponse. En 1978, j'ai vu Duke venir à Bakou deux fois avec un messager. Et son messager venir each time, time it was for a period of one day, Chaque visite durait and he, on, une he only met uh, him uh, with me, Hoi. Il ne rencontrait que Hoi. I knew he was Deutsch because I je had uh, seen him while I was studying at Tolslang. Question. Question. When you were attending studies, what did Pendant you see or hear at Tolslang? Tolslang. Response. Réponse. I heard the sound of people screaming, Oi, help! Coming Oi, from cowboy trucks, passing by the residence site during the studies. Question. Mm, Do you know if any of the workers and those who were tampered at Baku Question. are dead or alive? Response. I forget the names of Hoi's messengers, Réponse. and I did not know if they are dead or alive. I know Je that ne sais pas Comrade si Ta, Ta who was in my team at Baku, is Kamara alive. Tout ce que je sais, que Ta Today, dans mon groupe she lives Baku in Battambang, but I don't know which village, sub-district or district. I know that Comrade Leng from Baku is alive and now living at Roca Le or Kraum village, Kpok sub-district Saang district. Sahang, I know that Comrade Prat Kem is now living at Sampan Le Prekambel Sub-District, Koh district Tom, District, Kandal Province. Province de Kandal. But I have not Mais met or contacted him for the past 10 years. Années, ces dernières années. The witness has also given the biography with the photo attached. One copy of the written statement was provided to this witness at 16 hours 05 on the 1st of April 2008. After it was read aloud, the witness had no objection and agreed to sign a print. The president, the AV unit is now instructed to put document uh, under ERN 00 1867 58 up on the screen. La page 00 18 58. The President, could you please scroll down so that uh, we can see until the final page. The parties to the proceedings are now 
advice to review this document, including the accused himself. The AB unit is now instructed to remove this document, put another document uh, with document with ERN 0018 uh, The President, uh, the parties to the proceedings and the accused, uh, could you please review this document uh, up on the screen? Next. Do co-prosecutors wish to make any observation in relation to the statement of Kang Pan already read uh, by the greffe of the trial chamber just now? The floor is yours. The co-prosecutor, thank you, Mr. President. Having heard the statement read out, and in order to make sure that uh, there is a good record in the transcript, uh, the prosecution would like to suggest that uh, the, uh, page number two on the second line uh, from bottom be, the phrase be corrected because uh, the in that expression that uh, the person was the chief of the zone but it was Une not the chief of the chef zone, it was the chief of the commune Or, ce instead. Pas chef de, le, and point for another correction on page number five. La page cinq de la version Khmer. Line 17. À la the greffier read that le greffier Except one girl who traveled with me to Phnom Aural and stayed there. Uh, in Khmer, it was stayed there, but in English, it, uh, the girl died, actually. The president, uh, the civil party lawyers, uh, would you wish to make any observation in relation to the statement of uh, this witness? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, I would like to make a comment in relation to I would like to make uh, one observation, and that is the following. The text read out the statement of the witness um, referred to it interview with DCCAM and the witness um, confirmed the her statement made uh, before DCCAM and therefore I would like to refer to this statement which is in the Khmer version um, the document number D59 and then the ERN 00052417 uh, through 00052440. And uh, in English, uh, is, as far as I know, until now, no translation, full translation available, only a summary which can be found on, uh, under the ERN 00178327. I refer now to the English uh, summary and there on um, the ER on the second page of the summary that uh, the witness and I quote, recalled that marriages were arranged for medics and cadres at the battalion, company and platoon levels, with groups of 30 being married, of at, being married at one time. 
et que ces mariages étaient um, arrivés de manière collective. And as far as I have learned in the Khmer document, this should be uh, in the original uh, on page 24 of the document, the last page, but um, I'm not quite sure if this, this is right. And uh, therefore I want to uh, comment on this only that this shows that group weddings arranged by uh, so-called Ankar took place in uh, Stung Bak um, Baku and which was ah, under Stung the order of the accused and show uh, this fact shows um, shed light on the living conditions of the staff there. De vie du personnel qui se trouvait là-bas. We have already given the floor to the civil parties' lawyers to make observations in relation to the statement read out by the greffier of the trial chamber. And the latest observation seems to be far beyond uh, what the chamber wished uh, the civil party lawyer to comment on. Next, we would like to give the floor to the Defense Council to make their observation in relation to the record of the interview of Gang Pan as read out by the greffier of the trial chamber. Mr. Gathwood, thank you. Mr. President, the Defense Council has no observation. The President, next, uh, and finally, the accused enfin, is giving the opportunity to make his observation in relation to the statement already read out, and two documents that are related uh, to this document, the annexes. The accused. Mr. President, Monsieur first of Président, all, I would like to recognize document 0018675, which belongs to the document of S21. Truly, it means I admit that Kang Pan was a member of S21 who was dispatched to work at S24, Prezar. Number two, I'd like to uh, accept that the statement of Kang Pan is true in principle, so the document itself is true, and there has been very, very few shortcomings. For example, she said that Hoi lived with his wife. Actually, comrade Hoi uh, did not live with his wife because his wife was used in Phnom Penh, and he only came to pay her a visit uh, whenever he could. So this is the point for clarification. He she might uh, co be confused uh, when she said this. So comparing this statement to that of Bouton, si they can serve as the important documents for the trial chamber to establish the crimes at S21, and that's all, Your Honor. The President, President. The schedule for the hearings for this week comes to an end already, and it comes to an end earlier than expected. 
So we will take the adjournment Nous allons lever at this moment and uh, the next hearing will be resumed on the morning of 17th of August 2009. And uh, the chamber would like to also inform the parties and the public that next week la semaine prochaine the chamber is going to hear nous allons entendre the testimony of the expert and hear the statements of the civil parties ainsi que les parties civiles who have been decided by the chamber to call them par la chambre. according to the request by the party so that they can come to give their statements before parties. the chamber. So there will be a four-day sitting for la next week in relation to the civil party. Security personnel are now instructed to take the accused to the detention facility and bring him in to the courtroom on Monday, the 17th of August, 2009, at 9 p.m. Greffier, all rise.